name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Years ago, I had a friend who bought a lawnmower. It was one of those open box purchases, you know, where all the pieces you hope were in the box. And he got this box full of lawnmowers, very proud of himself because he put all the pieces together. He got the wheels on correctly, spark plug all lined up, wires working in the uh, engine, so it ran rather smoothly. Um, however, in order to actually put the, the uh, handle mechanism onto the deck of the mower, he needed two cotter pins. One of them was missing. So he sat there, and of course, my friend had this, this, this 10 inches of lawn to cut in this June uh, heat, and all that was keeping him from cutting that lawn was a 15 cent cotter pin. Let's call that a mustard seed. I have another friend, uh, my friend Steve, he's a gifted sailor. He's got a really awesome sailboat. One day he went out to uh, Lake Huron with some of his friends that were headed up to dinner in Saginaw. Uh, he plotted his course at two degrees and then uh, somebody broke out the fishing poles. So they got out the fishing poles, they began fishing and they caught some fish and it was really a fun time for them. And then he remembered, oh yeah, let's check the course settings. Well, he checked the course settings and found instead of, instead of going on two degrees, he had miscalculated, he should have gone on three degrees. That means he was off by one degree, which meant that he would not make it in time for, for his dinner engagement. That was all gone, they were gonna be late. Just because he was one degree off, let's call that one degree a mustard seed. And then of course, one of my friends is a really good golfer and he uh, was playing really well one summer. Then all of a sudden he developed a slice. That means when you hit the ball, it goes right. Every shot, whether you're on the tee, whether you're on the, the fairway, uh, even if you're chipping, right, right, right. They all go right. He couldn't do anything to fix it. His, his handicap actually was affected and he, he, uh, he gained 10 strokes. He couldn't get that slice under control. Finally, he went to the pro. Pro took a little video of his swing, looked at his grip, and finally said to him, hey, you know what? See that thumb where your right thumb is on the club? Move that a quarter inch. So my friend moved it a quarter inch. All of a sudden, pow, ball went straight. Hit a bucket of balls, every one straight. He had lost his slice, all because he'd moved his thumb a quarter inch. Let's call that grip adjustment. A mustard seed. In today's gospel, Jesus uses this image of a mustard seed not to talk about lawnmowers or sailing trips or golfing uh, grips, or even gardening for that matter. But Jesus uses this image as a parable. And you know, we have a theologian in our church, did you know her name's Deborah Davis? And theologian Deborah Davis likes to define a parable like this. It is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, a parable, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And the heavenly meaning is simple, friends. Big things come in small packages. Grand endings have humble beginnings. The tiniest adjustments can cause staggeringly large consequences. This miserable sermon can include a word or a phrase that can change your life. That's how God works. Because God uses mustard seeds all the time. You and I have to pause when we're tempted to get down on ourselves for the contributions that we're making. You and I have a tendency to believe we're expendable, that we can't make a big dent in the world's problems of injustice or poverty or hunger or well-being because we're just so inadequate. Well, the mustard seed does not let us think like this. Jesus does not let us think like this. We never know through whom God is going to work, to do what, to do it when, and to do it for whom. So let us not be surprised at the magic that God is bringing forth through you. Today, Graduation Sunday, this is our day of recognizing the achievements of our fellow parishioners who have successfully reached academic milestones. And Ellen, I think you put in there, your retirement from AAA was this year as well. So we're gonna mark milestones. Those are always wonderful opportunities for us to kind of re-gauge to us, to, to, to uh, set on a new, new uh, to chart a new course. We've got uh, Bucci Amanzi, uh, who we're gonna be talking about. Uh, not only did he graduate in college during a pandemic, but he got into medical school as well. Last week, he moved downtown into his own apartment where he, where he will spend lots of time and a lot of borrowed money on an education, on a graduate education, working, uh, with the gifts Jesus has given him to bring health 
to God knows how many people. We'll hear more from him later in our service. There's Angel Awaram. Uh, before the pandemic, she served not only as an acolyte here, our chief acolyte, you probably remember her. She's one of the most spiritually mature people we've had at the parish. Many of us in her confirmation class remember leading prayers uh, when she led them. She led with such grace and poise that mo most adults in the class uh, were envious. She is headed off to college with an academic scholarship, admiration of her parents, and the inspired pride of her parish family. We'll hear more from her later as well. Alex Reinstra also graduated from high school this year. Many of us know him by his faithful and humorous attendance at our 10 o'clock service as one of our announcement readers where the pandemic brought forth his gifts of humor and kindness. Alex is skilled in theater, he's skilled in teaching, and like me, he has declared that popular major, maybe you declared it when you're in school, it's called undecided. Uh, and so you many times enter your freshman year with that major, it often changes. Uh, Queasy Henry, whom we've not seen around here for a while because he's off at board boarding school, uh, he too is now graduating after honing his considerable skills on the basketball court. Next stop for him, will bring him to higher education, certainly more competition on the hard court. And then there's Nat Nathaniel Charter Harris. He's going to join us. You might th be thinking, wait a minute, didn't Nathaniel graduate from college? Well, Nathaniel has just so many achievements uh, that we're going we're to talk to him later on also. They have literally brought him to new heights as a professional pilot. We have all these memories, friends, of these young people, don't we, as a parish family. Uh, many of our young people who were commemorating today, they were baptized here, they were confirmed here, they came up through our Sunday school, and they are now launching into the wider world. We saw them as mustard seeds, and we just can't wait to see what kind of full and bounteous lives that we will continue to see them grow into. We're so proud of you, uh, graduates. We consider it an honor and a joy to have shared this part of your journey with you. And as you continue to grow, the message of the mustard seed is with you all as well. Never underestimate that gift, that skill, that mission that God has planned for you. If you've ever thought of yourself as insignificant, if you've ever thought of yourself as ill-equipped or unprepared or unfit, well, congratulations. Not only is this the kind of person who God works through, but we could argue that this is the only kind of person that God works through. Time and time again in the Bible, we hear stories about this. There's the insignificant shepherd boy, remember him, David, who became king of Israel. There's the abandoned Hebrew slave, the baby Moses, who was left floating in the River Nile, a humble, a humble, uh, a humble man who became a liberator of the Hebrews. Then, of course, there's St. Peter, uh, a lowly fisherman who ended up leading the Christian movement, which would become the largest religion the world has ever known. We never know through whom God is going to work, to do what, to do it when, to do it for whom. So let us not be surprised at the magic that God is working through you. A lot of this, friends, is like gravity. You don't have to believe in it for it to be true. It's just true. God is going to work through you, whether we feel like it or not. The 1930s, Ruth Wakefield of Whitman, Massachusetts. There's another Massachusetts for you, George. I don't know if you've ever been through, through Whitman, but she set out to make chocolate cookies back in the 1930s. She whipped up a batch of her butter dewdrop dough, and then she was like, I'm in such a hurry. I don't have time to melt the chocolate. You know what I'll do? I'll take this Nestle's chocolate bar, and I'll chop it up, and I'll put it in the dough, and that way it'll melt. I'll have my chocolate cookies. Well, guess what? Right. What did she invent? Totally by accident woman in a rush. And uh, that's when, when was baked the very first batch of chocolate chip cookies. She served it to her guests at her little uh, hotel called the Toll House Inn. That's why they're called Toll House Cookies, the most popular cookie in the world. Did Ruth Wakefield feel like she was going to bring many smiles to millions and millions of people? 1928, Alexander Fleming, a scientist, he went on vacation. He was a bit of a slob. And so he left his lab a total mess, including a dirty Petri dish he left in the laboratory sink. He got back, he found bacteria growing all over the plate, except in the area where the mold had formed. Hmm, very curious. This led to the creation of antibiotics. He invented penicillin. Millions and millions of lives have been saved because of that. Who knew? Then, of course, there was George Crumb, 1953, working as a cook in a resort town. He's got a crabby customer. Customer comes in, he always says, these French fries you're making me, they're cut way too fat. 
And so George got fed up and he said, okay, I'll show you thin French fries. Chops them really, really thin, fries them up, and he invents potato chips. Who knew, right? That's how things happen, friends. That's how God often works through that mustard seed. What's, what's that gift inside of you that God may be growing into a huge, huge bush? We never know through whom God is going to work, to do what, to do when, and for whom. God is hard at work through you and through me. So let us not be surprised at the magic God is bringing into the world thanks to you. Amen.